I'm Scott, and I'm going to show you how I built this hat rack today on Dad It Yourself. Hi, I'm Scott, and I assume, like me, you have a ton of ball caps that you've collected over the years. I've been in the Navy over 21 years, and I've collected a plethora of command ball caps, sports teams, places I've visited, and miscellaneous other places. With the quarantine going on and stay-at-home orders in full effect, it's been really hard to get materials, but fortunately I had this leftover piece of 1x6. I'm going to start by milling it by ripping it down to 3-inch boards on the table saw. So now that I've ripped these down to uh, one and three inches roughly, uh, I need three that are 34 inches long and two that are 20 inches long. And we're gonna do that on the miter saw. So now that we have these boards together, I need to mark out the slots and holes that'll hold the back of the hats. Basically, the holes are spaced two inches on center with a one inch diagonal from the front edge back to the hole. These three 34 inch boards make up the vertical members of the display. I secured them together with two sided tape, but if you don't have two sided tape, you can use CA glue and painter's tape. There's a bunch of videos here on YouTube that demonstrate this method. The reason I'm taping them together is it aligns everything and I'll have symmetrical holes and cuts. So I'm ready to drill the holes now. I've got my hole saw chucked up in my drill press. I've got a piece of scrap lumber here on the bottom so I don't have any blowout. And I have a stop back here clamped down to make sure the holes are consistent with the front edge of the board as my work goes. So that didn't work out so good. Uh, the plug is actually stuck up in here and it's not allowing the saw to go all the way through. So I'm going to have to switch to a spade pit. Okay, so I got everything uh, reset up again. One inch spade bit. The challenge I face now is I only have two inches of throw on the drill press and this is two and a quarter inches. So I'm going to have to go ahead and drill these holes, reset the uh, table a little higher once the bit is in the hole and then push it through the rest of the way. Let's get started on the first run of holes. Well that was definitely a lot more work than uh, I had anticipated. This little uh, 10 inch, he uh, did his best. He pushed as hard as he could. I ended up actually grabbing my hand drill, drilling a pilot hole through the bottom, and then flipping this thing over and coming from the back side, and that worked out really well. So uh, maybe a different technique for a future project. All right, so I have my bandsaw set up here. Uh, I've got a 45 degree miter gauge set up. You could use a hand saw or even a jigsaw to cut these holes, but I have a bandsaw, so I'm gonna use that. And we're gonna cut these slots from the face back to the holes we just drilled. Let's get started.
try this again. I got a thicker blade in there. The last blade I had in there was just too thin for this job and it was wandering all over the place. So I got a blade about three eighths, three sixteenths, pretty good size blade. I think that's gonna keep the cut nice and straight and cut this a lot better. Let's try this one. Well, that's not working. Let's try something else. So I ended up setting up my miter saw with a spacer back here and put the stop on so it only cuts down and I can cut the short 45s, then I'll reset the saw and cut the long 45s. This seems to be working out pretty good. So that miter saw did really quick work of these. Cut these out nice and 45. Uh, almost no blowout on the back, but that's okay. Uh, I'm going to clean these up with a rasp file, and then pull them apart, and we'll do some round over with a palm router. I'm going to jump the gun, pulling those pieces apart, but I just wrap some hanger tape around to bring it back together. I have to nip off this corner and then this corner up here as well. Okay, now for everybody's uh, favorite part. I'm going to sand these from 80 to 150 down to 220. So the middle vertical member actually straddles the horizontal support members. So I have to cut out a notch right here with the jigsaw. We're gonna try the jigsaw this time because I haven't had a lot of luck with the bandsaw tonight. So let's see how that works. So 
I'm going to be putting this thing together with pocket holes on the end and countersinking screws in the middle that go to the center vertical support. So those are going to be regular countersunk. So I'm going to be using Type Bond 3 on this, but you don't really need glue. Even with the pocket holes, it's probably pretty solid. Um, and if someone wanted to be able to take this apart like a military family or something, you wouldn't want to use glue on this, but I'm going to use glue on it. All right, time to stain. I'm gonna be using this Varathane wood stain. Uh, dries in an hour, cognac color, great color. Let's get started. Gonna use Varathane water-based, two coats, sand, and a third coat. Should be good. So the last construction step is I'm going to put a way to hang this. I'm going to use a pocketing bit. If you've ever used a pocketing bit, you'll see what you do is you plunge it down into the wood and then you move it sideways and it leaves a little pocket where you can hang a nail in there. So let's get that done.
now that we're all quarantined in the house, this is a great one day project you can do. This organized all my hats and this isn't even all of them. If you have any questions or comments, put those down below. Speaking of comments, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I've got some videos over here you may like. The subscribe button's right over here. Thanks for watching. Dad it yourself.